If you are pregnant and had one or even several previous C-sections, then you might ask yourself, can I have a normal vaginal delivery this time? <laughs> Therefore, we want to help you find out if you are a good candidate for VBAC, mm -hmm. which is a vaginal birth after C-section. Right. So in this video, we are first going to briefly discuss the main risk of VBAC. And then we are going to share with you the 14 most important factors that determine whether or not you are a good candidate for VBAC. Yes. This is Natalie, a pregnancy and birth consultant TCM therapist. And that's Matthias, a researcher and scientist. And we are here to help you and your baby naturally and science-based. So let's talk about VBAC. Okay, so first of all, please note that the information from this video is not intended to be the only basis for you to make a decision mm -hmm. if you should try VBAC or not. Right. Please understand that we can only provide you with general information based on scientific studies as well as the input that Natalie receives from obstetricians and midwives from her patients at the clinic mm -hmm. as Natalie prepares them for VBAC. But the problem is that that information constantly changes because scientists discover new interesting facts about VBAC every single day. Mm -hmm. And since not every provider has the same level of information, you can expect to hear lots of different opinions when you talk to different providers, right. right? So all we can do is give you some general background information that you can then use as a basis for a discussion with your healthcare provider. Right. So what exactly is VBAC? VBAC is short for vaginal delivery after a C-section and it basically means the successful trial of labor after a C-section. Yes, in general the success rate of VBAC is quite high. For example, according to the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in the UK, the success rate of planned VBAC is between 72 and 75 percent. Yeah. Just keep in mind that such high success rates may not be achieved in every country. Mm -hmm. So it could be that the average rate of success is a different one in your own country, right? Right. But if it is a success, then if there are no complications, then a vaginal birth has lots of advantages over C-sections. Yeah. For example, you don't need another surgery. You're normally going to recover much faster after birth. There is going to be less pain after your delivery. And most importantly, if you have plans to have even more children in the future, then VBAC could be a better alternative. Yeah. That's because the more C-sections a woman had, the more risks there are involved in future pregnancies. Yes, but of course, our childbirth after a C-section comes with its own very specific risks. Yeah. The most important being the risk that the uterine scar from the previous C-section could rupture. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously because during a delivery, a lot of pressure builds in the uterus. Forces that could cause the uterus to tear or to rupture because of the weak spot in your uterus, which is your scar. Right. Now the chances of uterine ruptures to happen are really very, very small. The Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in the UK, for instance, says that the risk of uterine rupture is only about 0.5%, which means 1 in 200 women. But again, this may be different in your country. Right. But in more developed countries, the risk is normally considered to be very low, right? However, when uterine rupture does happen, the outcome could be severe, not only for the mother, but also for the baby, right? right. As a result, when the uterus ruptures, the medical team must act really fast and get the baby out of that womb as fast as possible in yeah. an emergency C-section. And because of that, most doctors will only allow you to try having a VBAC if the hospital is equipped for an emergency C-section. When that's not the case, you can only try to find another hospital or doctor or have a repeat C-section. Right. Now, as I already mentioned, the risk of uterine rupture in general is considered to be very low, right? At least in more developed countries. Right. However, the actual risk for you personally very much depends on factors which are specific to your particular case. Mm -hmm. So let us have a look at the factors which determine whether or not you are a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The first factor is the type of uterine incision that was used in your previous C-section. A low horizontal uterine incision is the optimal incision for a VBAC given that the uterine scar has a certain thickness. Yeah. 
If you had a high vertical incision, also known as classical C-section, then VBAC is not recommended because the risk of uterine rupture is much higher in such a case. Yeah. For women with other uterine scars, such as an inverted T or J incision or a low vertical incision, the risk is not so clear according to the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, mm -hmm. which is why they recommend making a decision on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. But in general, if you had a low horizontal uterine incision, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The second fact, there are previous surgeries on your uterus. So in general, if you had any previous surgeries on your uterus apart from the C-section, for example, the removal of uterine fibroids, mm -hmm. then the risk of uterine ruptures could be increased. Yes, however, it very much depends on the kind of surgery you had, which is why your medical team needs to look at your particular case and then make a recommendation on a case-by-case -case basis, right. right? But in general, if you had no previous uterine surgeries, apart from the previous C-section, of course, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The situation is different though when you had a previous uterine rupture, which is our third factor. In such cases, the risk of a uterine rupture is much higher, mm -hmm. which is why VBAC is not recommended in such cases. Yeah. And so if you had no previous uterine ruptures, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The fourth factor are pregnancy-related complications, you know, the kind of complications which can make it impossible for you to have a vaginal birth. Most importantly, we are talking about placenta previa. Placenta previa means that the placenta has attached very low in your uterus so that your cervix is partially or totally covered by the placenta. Now, it depends a bit on the degree of placenta previa, but in general, if your placenta blocks your baby's way out, then you can obviously not have a vaginal birth, right? <laughs> right. This applies to any vaginal birth, not just when you had a previous C-section, right. okay? So if we don't suffer from any such pregnancy-related complications, which could prevent you from having a vaginal birth, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. That's right. The fifth factor is the number of previous C-sections. Now, interestingly, different scientific studies come to different conclusions here. For example, one scientific study found that there is a higher risk of complications in a vaginal delivery if a woman had two previous C-sections compared to when she only had one C-section. Mm -hmm. But another study found that women with two or even more previous C-sections do not seem to have significantly higher rates of uterine ruptures than women with only one C-section. Yes, and because of that, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists says that women may be offered VBAC even with multiple previous C-sections, mm -hmm. however, only after counseling with the senior obstetrician. Yeah. In other words, having had multiple previous C-sections does not necessarily mean that you cannot try having a VBAC, but it very much depends on your country, your hospital, and in particular the medical team. In general though, if you only had one C-section so far, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The sixth factor is the time gap between your previous C-section and your next delivery. So one thing we learned over the years is that doctors feel more comfortable when the time gap between your C-section and your next delivery is at least 18 to 24 months, right? right? But once again, different studies come to different conclusions. <laughs> Some say the longer the interval, the better. Other studies find that shorter time gaps do not increase the risk of uterine rupture compared to longer time intervals. Right. And so, as always, it really comes down to the opinion of your doctor. Yeah. Again, in general, doctors feel better if the interval is at least between 18 and 24 months. So if that applies to you, you're more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The seventh factor is your age. One scientific study has found that women who are younger than 35 years of age are more likely to have a successful VBAC and are less likely to have complications during VBAC. So if you are younger than 35 years of age, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Yes. However, it does not mean that you cannot have a VBAC when you are over 35, yeah. okay? It just means that the risk of an unsuccessful VBAC is somewhat higher if you are older than 35 years of age. That's right. The age factor is your weight. 
Most people will tell you that your weight plays an important role in VBAC. In fact, one scientific study has shown that women with a body mass index of greater than 29 before their pregnancy are almost 50% less likely to have a successful VBAC compared to underweight women. Also, women who are not obese but who excessively gained weight during their second pregnancy, which means more than 40 pounds, which is about 18 kilograms, seem to be 40% less likely to have a successful VBAC compared to those who gained less than that amount. But there is also a recent study from the US which comes to the conclusion that excessive weight gain during pregnancy does not impact the success rate of VBAC. Yeah. So guess what? It all comes down to your doctor's opinion. Right. But in general, if neither your pre-pregnancy weight nor your weight gain during pregnancy are an issue, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. That's right. <laughs> the ninth factor is labor induction. Some studies have found that a medical induction reduces the chances of a successful VBAC mm -hmm. and considerably increases the risk of uterine rupture. Right. However, the actual risk involved very much depends on the kind of induction. For example, it was found that the induction with prostaglandins or pitocin comes with a higher risk than the induction of labor using mechanical methods, mm -hmm. such as the artificial rupture of membranes. Still, be prepared that some doctors are not willing to let you try having a VBAC if you need to be induced. Right. So in general, if you go into labor spontaneously, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. The tenth factor is your bishop's score. In very simple terms, your bishop's score tells you how ready your cervix is for labor. It was found that the higher your bishop's score before you go into labor, the higher your chances of successful VBAC, which is why you're more likely to be a good candidate for mm -hmm. VBAC. So if you want to know how to increase your bishop score, check out the information in the description below this video. Right. Factor number 11 is your baby's weight. Many people will tell you that if your baby weighs more than 4000 grams, then a vaginal delivery is not recommended. But this is not specific to VBAC, right? It applies to any vaginal delivery. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that the question what that exact threshold is varies from country to country and from doctor to doctor, right? But in general, if your baby does not have excess weight, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. Factor number 12 are overdue pregnancies. Many doctors get worried if you go past your due date when you want to try having a VBAC. However, it is important to understand where those worries come from. Mm. So first of all, they are concerned that your baby's size may become too big for a normal delivery. Yeah. And second, they are worried that if you go past your due date, it increases your chances of an induction, which as we now know, considerably increases the risk of a uterine rupture. That's right. But of course, not every baby becomes too big and not every woman needs to be induced when, when a woman goes past her due date, right? Still, if you go into labor spontaneously before or on your due date, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. Factor number 13 are certain medical conditions of the mother. Examples here are diabetes, or gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, etc. These are all conditions which can lower your chances of a successful VBAC, which is why such conditions need to be discussed with your doctor. Yeah. But in general, if you don't suffer from any such medical conditions, you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Yes, and then the final factor is your history of vaginal deliveries. Yes, in general, if you had a previous vaginal delivery, and in particular if you had a successful VBAC in the past, then you are more likely to be a good candidate for VBAC. Right. Now remember that the factors that we mentioned in this video are subject for discussion with your healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. And it's important to note that different doctors and different hospitals rely on different standards and may base their recommendations on different kinds of scientific studies and guidelines, right? So we encourage you to talk to several providers, mm -hmm. compare the views and opinions, and look for a provider who has a high success rate of VBAC, ideally over 70%, although that number greatly depends on your country.
Finally, if you do decide to try having a bee bag, check out the videos that you can find in the description below this video, in which we explain how to increase your bishop score and how to increase your chances of a spontaneous labor. Right. We really hope that our video helped you understand if you are a good candidate for bee bag. Yeah. If we did find our video helpful, we would be super grateful if you could leave us a like. Yes. <laughs> and for more useful tips and tools on pregnancy and baby related topics, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to hit the bell.